my channel. My name is Tiffany Inc. and this is a summer solstice reading for Leo. Um, for Leo, sun, moon, rising, and falling. Um, the rising and the falling is also known as the ascendant and the descendant. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do today is go through, um, I'm going to pick 12 cards total. So it'll be for the next six months, July through December of 2022. Um, what are you going to be experiencing internally? And then what are you going to be experiencing externally for each month that is to come? Okay. Um, again, we are here with the Leos. I'm giving myself a second here to, yeah. to get reacclimated with the energies here. I took a little bit of a break. I've been doing these Zodiac readings, um, all of these summer solstice readings for everybody. And um, I had to take a little bit of a break, but it's okay. I'm back. Okay, so I guess that's what I'm talking to you about. Each sign, I've kind of had a little bit of like an intro topic. And I guess yours is, if you're tuning into this, I guess you've kind of done the same thing. Took a little bit of a break um, in whatever aspect, whatever aspect of your life that you thought about when I said that. That's really what I'm talking about. So you took a break. And it's time to really start letting your light shine again and uh, to really, hmm, let's see, I'm more of in a doing mode lately, so maybe that's what it is for you too. And that's like how I'm feeling, that's what I'm being brought to. So um, maybe you're being less communicative, so maybe you're being less talkative, you're, let, you're not expressing what you're thinking and feeling and, and your goals and stuff so much. Maybe you're more working on accomplishing them, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, Leo. Pretty cool. And so, okay, Spirit, why am I being brought to that? You're in a good place. Like, that's, it's good for you to be that way. I'm just bringing it up just so that I could call it out. Just to say, um, Spirit wants you to know that you are being, you are recognized. It is seen that you are doing instead of your usual verbalizing what you're going to do or want to do. Okay. <clears throat> so for Leo, let me just say, um, before I get started on this, I am a different kind of reader. Um, I, as a psychic, I get messages from everywhere. Like, uh, okay. So from all five senses, I have all of the clairs or whatever. So I hear voices. I see things. I just know things sometimes. I, uh, I'm also mediumistic, so I have, like, sometimes I'll have ancestors of yours or something like that come in during conversations, and, and I just kind of say what I get. Um, not only that, but I've got this set up like this, so you can see what it's like to sit across from me at a tarot reading if you were going to be in person. Um, normally, if you were in a tarot reading with me, you'd be able to see the cards and, you know, hold them whatever you want to, but in this type of a situation... It really doesn't matter because I don't go by the traditional meaning of the cards usually. I usually just go by what I'm getting when I see the images. And and then sometimes as I'm looking at it, pieces of information will come into my head. Like, oh, the Eight of Wands means this. You know, so I just get a lot of different information. So don't be frustrated if you can't see the cards. And not only that, I think I like to make my readings to be to where you don't even have to watch if you don't want to. You can just listen. So that way you can just hear the information. Sometimes I'm doing that. I'm cleaning my house and I'm listening to other tarot readers sometimes. And when I do that, I will, you know, put the headphones in and just listen. But anyway, let me get into this. So for the next six months for Leo. Okay. July, August, September. October, November, December. That is the external world for Leo <clears throat> for the rest of 2022. Okay. What else do I got going on here? Okay. So that's going to be July, August, September, October, November, and December. <clears throat> Let's get this started. 
this is for Leo. And you know what? Um, <clears throat> I'm having a hard time. So Leo, again, remember I said we're more doers right now. And I say we. I do not have Leo in my big four. But um, I recently heard that whatever your fourth house is, is kind of like who you are on the inside. So I don't know if that would be who you were trained to be. I'm still, I'm, I am an astrologer and a psychic and all this stuff, but I am just as much of a student as anybody else. So sometimes I'm getting bits and pieces of knowledge and I haven't quite turned it into the whole wisdom yet. And, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I lost what I was saying. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm feeling the need to clear a little bit <clears throat> of my throat chakra. Speaking our emotions. Okay, cool. Thank you. So I'm going to take a time out there. Um, I will be right back because I'm cooking lunch. So one second. Okay. I am so sorry about that. Yeah, I think we're back. We are. I was looking down at my computer to see if it was still recording. Um, I'm so sorry about that. But what I was trying to say is that I've heard recently that your fourth house, um, it's the house of home, the house of roots. It is the, well, these are things that I know. And it is the relationship that you have with your mom and, and those type of things. However, <clears throat> personality wise, I recently read somewhere that it is also who you are like regularly, on a regular basis. Because you know, everybody's got their highs and lows. So like me, let me just say, if I could explain this, <clears throat> how it's coming into my head, okay? So that would mean I am Sagittarius Sun, Sagittarius Moon, Taurus Rising, and Scorpio Fall. Okay, so to me, I know that I have the, um, the personality of a Taurus and Scorpio, but then I know that I have the fieriness of the Sagittarius. I know that that's all there. But then pretty well for the entire time that I've been alive, um, I have been told that I have this regalness to me, that I have a royal air to me where I feel like I've also been called your highness. I, you know, like there's good sides of it and there's bad sides of it. Um, but that is just an aspect of what I've been told. So I don't know if that comes from the way I was raised I was treated like I thought I was a princess, or if um, that was literally my attitude towards life, is I'm, I'm a princess, I'm a queen, and I ain't a princess anymore, I would be a motherfucking queen, but, you know, um, the queen of hearts, you know, that's kind of the road that I master here, and it's, um, it's kind of cool, the concept, so I just wanted to share that with you, I do share some of your Leo energiness in there, so I hope that, um, that kind of opens the door a little bit when when I understand you especially for a Leo when I understand where you're coming from and how you feel and some of it I feel too then it kind of makes it to where the things that I say don't sound like I'm an asshole and that you're an asshole because you're not an asshole you're just who you are That's okay. <clears throat> all right so when I channel when I do these things I have a lot of energy that runs through me I can already tell that since our throat chakra, your throat chakra right now, Leo, is kind of like you're in pain. So if you were to talk, all you would be talking about is things that you're in pain from. So you're not wanting to talk. So you might hear my voice actually start sounding like I, I, a man or something weird, like something like I've been up all night. So it, just bear with me if that, if that happens. It's okay. So anyway. Spirit, what is going to be taking place for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Falling for the rest of the year for 2022? Um, may you please protect their energy along with mine and bring the most relevant information to the right people. Okay. So what's going on July internally for Leo? All right. A vision quest. So, Leo... 
you uh, have your eye on the prize and you are going for it. Like, so internally, I don't want to say going for it because this is internal. <clears throat> I'll tell you external in a minute. But internally, you, you have a goal. And uh, you can see the steps or you've put the steps in motion to start. Not to start, but you've already started it. But you put the steps in motion and now you're just watching them unfold, kind of. But you're keeping your eye on the prize. Okay, so for July, that's what you're going to be experiencing. And internally, again, I said you're going to keep your eye on the prize. We've got the Hierophant, and it's literally you're going. So July for you is going to be a lot of the same. And you're going to have that good outlook that's going to show that you're just going to be able to see <clears throat> the good that's coming towards you. So you're going to be watching your ship sail in. That's kind of how I feel with that one. Okay, um, now August for you Leo, internally, there's going to be something that jolts you awake, like a wake-up call. You're going to get a wake-up call. That's what this card is. So it's going to be a wave of emotions a little bit, but you're going to see something through it. And, and it's going to ultimately be for the good, but I'm just letting you know what's going to happen. Um, in August, externally, what's going to happen is you're going to be making a judgment call. So either <clears throat> you're going to be down on your luck and somebody's going to offer their hand to help you and, you know, you're going to be, that's going to be the wake up call because that person that does reach out to help you, that's going to be that one person that you didn't think that you could count on. Not that one person, but that is going to be somebody that you didn't realize was somebody that you can count on, but they are somebody that you can't count on. Or someone else is going to bear their soul to you and you're going to have to um, make the decision to either reach out and reconnect with them and uh, connect with them or shut them down. Okay, so that's happening for you in August. September, and again, that's the birthday season. So happy birthday, Leo, for July or August. Lots happening, not lots happening, but enough happening to keep you motivated and on the right track. Ah, September. Okay, we have some volatility going on, but you're a fire, so it does happen that way. So, Leo, sun, moon, rising, and falling, you're going to be feeling a little bit hostile. Okay? So, whatever decision it is that you make, you know, you got to understand there's highs and there's lows, there's rebirths, and then there's death every month that does happen. So whatever is dying off or you, you're you supposed to be letting go of is going to be making you hostile on a regular basis. And um, for fire signs in general, when we're going through shit, we kind of do tend to be a little hostile. Maybe internal, like we're quiet, but just the demeanor is more hostility than anything else. It happens. What's going to be happening on the outside of your world Okay. Yeah, outside world, um, again, in September, it's going to be more of the same. Uh, uh, you're going to have made that judgment call, but you're just going to be taking one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other to reach that goal. All right, so you're going to have a good outward um, appearance. You're going to be have a very determined appearance, um, friendly, all that kind of stuff. But your energy is not going to stay friendly. Your energy is going to stay like, this is difficult. I'm having a difficult time. Okay? October for Leo, um, we have some karma. So what I'm getting from this is something that you overlooked. So sometimes when you are on your one-track mind stuff, you overlook people or feelings or situations or just something that's like beneath. And, you know, it happens sometimes when you're dealing with a bigger picture. Sometimes the smaller things get overlooked, but that's what you that's what you have your support system around you for, is to be able to see those things and recognize those things and then let you know. So in um, October, you're really going to realize that there's a few things, like some things are going to come to light to you um, that you, there were a few things that you overlooked and now you're having to deal with the consequences of them, but you're not going to feel unprepared. You're going to feel supported and able to handle whatever comes your way. 
on the external world. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, on the external world, you know, you're geared up, you know, that you can take care of yourself, and that's exactly what you're doing. Others around you, you know, life is a battlefield is what I just heard. Life is a battlefield for you right now. So um, with that being said, in, in October. So in October, with life being a little bit of a battlefield, you are able to hold your own. Other people might not make it. Other people might be, you know, a big mess, a hot mess all around you, but you can handle it and you're going to be kind of like taking cover and um, defending yourself. Okay. November, Leo, how you're going to feel. Okay. So after this period right here, you're going to emerge. So you're going to be able to, to come back out and um, be the leader that you are of your own life and of the people that are around you. Okay. Externally, externally in November, Leo, you're going to be given an opportunity and you're going to have to make a choice. So you're going to emerge and once you do, you're going to put yourself out there and then you're going to get that opportunity and you're going to have to make a decision. December, Leo, internally, you're going to feel a little bit vulnerable. So whatever decision that you do make, it's going to, not that you're, you're going to doubt it, but you're at this point in time, it's going to be one of those, was the grass greener on the other side? But externally, uh, yeah, like it's going to be a new venture. So externally, you're going to be doing something new. But internally, you're going to be feeling a little bit uneasy about it in December. So that's really cool. Um, let's see. I'm being guided to pull a couple of goddess cards for you, Miss or Mr. Leo. You have that internal masculine energy. So you have that God energy naturally within you. Okay. But if you want to be able to rule your life correctly, okay, and to the best of your ability, you have to be able to channel that inner feminine as well. You have to be able to be the king and the queen. Your inner king and queen, okay? So I'm pulling just three different goddesses that will help you on your journey for the rest of the year, and, and then like maybe their, their biggest message. I keep only wanting three. They're trying to give me four, so... Clearly, Leo, you're needing a little bit of help here. <clears throat> or you're favored. How about we go with that? I have Cultis, Diana, Eagle Woman, and Celine. Ooh, these are good ones. This first one, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. K-A-L-T-E-S is a moon goddess venerated by the Yudric peoples of Western Siberia. A shapeshifter, she is shown here manifested as a hare. An animal sacred to her. This appearance shows her lunar nature. I don't know if that's even seeable. Okay. It shows her lunar nature. Many creatures, when looking at the moon, see the outline of a hare who lives in the moon. The hare is often seen as an intermediary between lunar deities and humans. So the appearance of Kaltis in the form in this form indicates her accessibility to people. She's known as a fertility goddess and a goddess of rejuvenation. She's called upon by women in childbirth, for she is especially venerated as a promoter of the beginning of the life cycle. Although she is somewhat feared because she can determine people's destinies, she's mostly revered for her gentle wisdom. She is a compassionate guide to the mysteries of life. So I'm going to read this, each one, and I'm not going to give any other descriptions because you reading, you watching this, you're going to get whatever message you were supposed to get out of that. You don't have to remember all of it. Just whatever it was that jumped out at you, that is what you should be researching or looking into, okay? And then we have Diana. Diana is the ancient lady of the beasts, called by the Romans Lucina. 
and I know I'm not saying that right. It's okay. Goddess of the light. As mistress of wild things, she is especially responsible for anything young and vulnerable, be it wild or human. She is a goddess of solitude, <clears throat> comfortable with the wilderness and with the great silences of nature. She represents the mystic, primitive identity of the hunter and the hunted. Diana is a moon goddess, symbolizing the moon in its crescent phase. She stands for the Virgin, the self-sufficient, free goddess who lives life on her own terms. Especially a goddess of women, she is related to all phases of female existence, from infancy to menstruation, through birth, nursing, menopause, and death. Diana stands for the part of us that is at home in the wilderness, at home with our primitive instinctual nature. Eagle Woman. Despite the fact that the life-giving and death-wielding bird goddess is one, let me just make sure you can see, yeah, okay, is one of the oldest representations of the goddess, eagles have usually been linked with the masculine, with a few exceptions. The Sphinx of Egypt had the wings of an eagle, and the Aztec goddess, I don't know how to say it, was also called Eagle Woman. This Eagle Woman shows a new marriage of the feminine and the eagle. She represents all an eagle stands for, spirit, valor, majesty, renewal, accuracy of sight, spiritual aim, and the ability to soar to the heights. She also holds in her hands a vessel, the traditional symbol for the feminine for that which receives, contains, and nourishes. Here, both sets of values are joined, emblematic of a different combination of strengths that are part of being woman born. Eagle woman is a joyful affirmation of our ability to break out of millennia old stereotypes and find a new definition that embraces the entire continuum of being alive. She teaches that women can express the qualities of the eagle while continuing to contain and nurture. Okay, and then we have Selene. Selene, queen of starlit heavens, is the ancient Greek goddess of the moon. She carries the moon across the sky in a white chariot driven by winged horses or bulls. She is the totality of the moon with its waxing into fullness and waning into darkness. Selene fell in love with a mortal. And the fucker. Endymion. There he is. Endymion. When she descended to the earth to join Endymion, he fell into a deep sleep from which he never awoke. Selene continued to visit him nightly. In later Greek mythology, Selene represented the full moon, while Artemis represented the crescent or waxing moon and Hecate, the waning and dark moon. Hence, Selene is Phoebe, meaning bright, shiny. She is traditionally represented with the crescent moon as a diadem. Selene represents the fullness of life, incorporating all phases of light and darkness in her shine. That was a mouthful. And usually I'm pretty good with um, pronouncing the names and shit, but when there was so much to read, it was a little bit difficult. That is all that I have for you. Leo, if um, I hope that you like the type of reader that I am, and if you did, I hope that you will subscribe. Um, I hope that you have an amazing day and an amazing rest of your year. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Let me come over here and turn this off. Come on.